Last week, I was talking about what is carbon removal. I had the pleasure of interviewing a whole bunch of people and hearing what they thought. I heard from a ton of people afterwards who emailed in with their own definitions of carbon removal. My favorite was from my buddy Mac. He said, extracting carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and disposing of it. I love that. That comes down to the next question, which is who's gonna pay to pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? And I think in 2020, that is a really exciting question. I'm gonna share more about all the things that I'm seeing in terms of people wanting to pay to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Fundamentally, this comes down to supply and demand. On the supply side, we've got a trillion tons of excess carbon dioxide. So in a sense, carbon dioxide is all there. If somebody wanted to pull it out, it wouldn't cause an ice age or anything, it would just pull back carbon dioxide to around uh, the pre-industrial levels of, of carbon in the air. But on the demand side, that's really what we need to figure out. Who pays to pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? So in 2020, I see like four or so different types of customers that may pay for, or that rather are already paying to pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So when I think customer, I think of individuals, I think of corporations, governments, and investors. I also think of it philanthropists, but I, I kind of think of them as, as investors as well. And if you have other ideas for, for other types of customers, I'd love to hear it. So first up are individual customers. The benefit is there's a lot of them. The challenge is we really need to figure out what's in it for them. So I'm working on that at negative. We're making consumer products made with atmospheric carbon dioxide, things like bracelets, planters, bathroom tiles. I also see the individual side of, uh, of carbon removal through my work at Air Miners. We sell tickets to our virtual events and about 10 or 20% of those tickets go towards pulling carbon dioxide from the air in order to account for the carbon dioxide that's emitted from the production of the event. That includes our planning, that includes running the computers and the servers to host the video calls, all that kind of stuff. If you buy a carbon negative ticket, it removes twice that amount of carbon dioxide from the air. That's pretty cool, but the other tickets are free. And so that's something that I'm really interested in understanding is what's in it for the people that are buying this ticket. It's totally optional. It pays for carbon that, that you don't get. You just get the, the satisfaction of knowing this is happening. But there's something happening there. The individual as a customer is really exciting and there's a lot to be learned, a lot to discover there. So then you've got corporations, governments, and investors. Now corporations, they're thinking about how to buy this stuff in a big way. They're thinking, how do we make our next building out of cement that's made with carbon dioxide? Or like Stripe and Microsoft, they're thinking about how do we buy carbon removal credits that pull carbon from the atmosphere. Microsoft, for example, is rewinding its carbon emissions all the way back to their, their start in 1975. So they're gonna calculate all their carbon emitted and they're gonna, they're gonna remove it, they're gonna roll it back. Uh, Stripe has committed a million dollars to four different projects that remove carbon from the air. We did a whole panel with air miners talking about that. Corporations have a big role to play, whether it's buying the actual materials that are coming out of the air uh, or buying carbon removal credits. Next up are governments setting up programs, putting a price on carbon. There's been some ex really exciting developments in that. Uh, a new bill coming out this week that was really well covered by Carbon 180. Uh, their team came to the Carbon Removal Newsroom this week. So check out that podcast if you want to learn more about what's happening on the, on the government side as a government being a customer for carbon removal. And then finally, investors. One area that's emerging are more venture capital investments and funders. About a year and a half ago, Y Combinator announced its request for startups in carbon removal technologies. And that really shifted the conversation because not only could we tap into philanthropic funders, but now there was a, a growing conversation around pulling carbon from the air as a investable business. That's something that there's a, there's a lot more emerging in that space. Vinod Kosla just published an article on Medium calling for entrepreneurs working on carbon removal. Uh, he says it's desperately needed. Super exciting. He highlights uh, director capture. He highlights cement uh, using carbon dioxide from the air. Carbon 180 also launched their entrepreneur in residence program earlier this year. Uh, and they are funding, or they funded, 
uh, five up and coming entrepreneurs who each got money to, to help them explore an idea uh, and to create a business around it. We're gonna be hosting an event with them uh, as part of the Air Miners community. So we're gonna be hosting the uh, Carbon 180 entrepreneurs to hear their thinking, to hear you know how they process the world. Uh, so, so check out conference.airminers.org to sign up to hear more about that. On the funding side, there's stuff with Y Combinator, there's stuff with Carbon 180. There's some other things that are going on behind the scenes that I look forward to sharing, uh, sharing more, but suffice to say that this, this, this theme of, of investing and, and grabbing onto new ideas and supporting them with early stage investment is, is going exponential in the next 12 months. So that's super exciting to see, and I hope to talk more about that as it, uh, as it comes more public. Philanthropists have played a huge role to date in terms of getting paid to pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The whole air miners community has been supported since the early days by philanthropic funding and support, including the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. Air miners just got a small grant to run events for the next three months. So really philanthropists are very active in the carbon removal space. So that's my sense of who pays for carbon removal. How do you get paid to remove carbon from the air? those are the customers that I'm seeing in 2020 make something people want, whether it's for individuals, corporations, governments, philanthropies, or venture capital investors. If you've got other people to add to this list or other stories to add to this, let me know. I think it's really important that we figure out as a, as a community, as a planet, as a civilization, how do we pay for carbon removal?